we're about to put a loop inside of a loop and this is where a lot of people's brains start to hurt. These are uh, somewhat hard to think about. So let's analyze this. We're going to create a variable called x uh, and we're going to go until x is more than 10 and we're going to increment x right here. I'm going to swap that to a plus plus before. By the way, you can you can do a plus plus and a plus plus. I don't recommend ever doing that ever. Um, so x is going to go up by one on the outer loop. Now the inner loop right here is going to uh, run uh, several times. So y is equal to one while y is less than 10 plus plus y. So how many times it's going to run? should run 10 times. Now sometimes it's hard to look at this if it's going to run 9 times or 10 times. Uh, you're going to find that a lot of times you really want to start things at 0 and then go less than the number of times you want it to run. So I'm just going to change it up a tiny bit here. And this print statement just forces uh, the Let's see, the number to print out with some extra space in it so that our chart lines up nicely, which you can see on the right side in the book. All right, now because I put zeros instead of ones, you know, zero times anything is zero. So all you're printing out is the product of X and Y right there. And then the second line is the product of, let's see, when X is one with all the different Y values. So one times each y value is the y value itself. So those are the actual y values right there. This third line, x will be two. So you're gonna see two times all the y values, three times all the y values, four times all the y values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So still a multiplication chart, but usually we would uh, skip the zeros at the end right there.